Good morning. Oh, yeah. I'll just stand here and wave. I'm pretending I'm the queen this morning. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing today? It's Friday. So officially, that should be the end of the week, but I have to work tomorrow, so not actually my Friday till tomorrow. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. I'm teaching two long arm classes, so that'll be fun. One gal's coming from out of town. She's going to try the long arm for the very first time. She really wanted to buy one, so instead of taking her money and telling her to buy one, I said, why don't you take a class first, and we'll try this machine out, and you can see how much you love it, because I always feel like it's nice to make a little investment to see if you like something before you just go in whole hog. You know what I'm saying? And so she's really excited. She's coming tomorrow, and that has nothing to do with any of you. Welcome to Stash Busters, everybody. I'm just trying to small talk my way through the beginning here until a few more people join us. Hopefully, you've heard of the Stash Busters program before. If you have not, welcome to your first episode. Stash Busters is a movement that we began back in January in an effort to help quilters use up the stash that they already have on hand. If you're anything like me, you've got tons of fabric, like more than you can possibly piece in your entire lifetime. And I am fairly young as far as quilting goes. Um, so it's just time to start using that stuff up, right? And uh, we also were doing all these little videos alongside the patterns so that people could learn online in a community type environment and just have some fun and see tips and tricks live that you might not think of or have experienced before. I'm sorry, I really wrapped that sucker up trying to get it to... <laughs> we got all these cords wrapped around the base of the iPad. Um, anyways, it's always nice to see someone put something together because you might learn something that you had not thought of or something that you've never encountered before. And a lot of us are self-taught. So many of us are self-taught. Thank goodness for YouTube these days and all the bloggers online and pattern designers that are willing to share their uh, knowledge with everybody online. And that's how I started too until I met um, a local quilt shop owner and I worked for her for a short period of time and she taught me how to quilt. And um, she was so precise and, and I, oh, I really took that to heart. So um, when I started making quilts, I really put in a lot of effort to make sure that everything was um, very precise, very accurate, and really well done because, man, fabric is expensive, right? So I wanted to make sure that I was not doing it a, a disservice by just slapping it together. And so I really pride myself on trying to do a good job. But at the same time, I'm not going to kill myself trying. You know, I realize that there's got to be a little bit of humility in any creation that a human makes because I'm not perfect. Why should I expect my creation to be perfect? Are we getting any people in there watching, Elle? Yeah. Good? Okay. <laughs> Landon says it's okay to stop rambling and that I can actually begin. So the quilt we're going to be starting is called Stronghold, and it is this lovely rag quilt that you see here on display behind me. It, of course, was designed by our lovely Sheila van der Linden. And what would we do without you, Sheila? Honestly, we love you so much, and we're so grateful to have you. Um, Sheila found that she had a little bit of fabric left over, so then she whipped up these fantastic uh, little throw pillows that could also go beautifully on your couch with your rag quilt. And here's the great thing. Sheila made this double-sided, so it's completely different colorway on the back side. Ta-da! And so the pillows are also double-sided. So if you want to change up your front room with the seasons or you just need a bit of a change, this is a great project for you because it's double-sided and you can do the pillows to match. So I'm pretty excited about starting this one. Have you ever made a rag quilt before? Leave me a comment there and let me know, first of all, where you're watching from. I always like to know where my viewers are watching from. I think it's fascinating that people across the world tune in to watch this show. And uh, I also want to know if you've made a rag quilt before. I've done a couple of them. I, um, when the kids were young, we did one as a gift for one of the other kids' mom. We used to do a little junior quilting guild in our home and uh, one of the other girls moms was going in for surgery so the girls all worked together to whip one up I also made one for the 
music teacher at the children's school. She had bought all this fabric and her machine crapped out on her. So she asked me to finish it up for her and uh, I was happy to do so. I don't actually own a rag quilt. So now after I do this one, I'm going to have my own rag quilt, which I'm actually pretty excited about. Ooh, it is quiet in here when those machines stop running. So you guys, as always, we love to do a giveaway. Today, our giveaway is going to be a pair of rag snips. You're going to need these in order to create all these fuzzy intersections on your rag quilt when you're done. And you can go ahead and do that with scissors. But let me tell you, these spring loaded rag snips make the job so much easier. So we'll be giving away a set of those at the end of the show. All you have to do is share this video. As you're watching, you'll see the options underneath the video, like, comment, and share. Please click share. That will broadcast this video to your friends in your Facebook feed. And then if they are quilters as well, they can join in on the fun, which is, you know, a free pattern and some live tutorials. If you are unfamiliar with how to get the pattern, you're going to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. The link should be above this video. And you're going to enter your email address. We will send you an email with your very own strong hold pattern attached. Okay, so that's how that all works. Let's go over our requirements for this particular pattern. So you can see that Sheila used some neutrals, grays, creams, and some greens on the front of this quilt. The back is made of some pinks and teals. There's the pinks. more corals and teals there, even aqua. So you're going to buy equal amounts of fabric for the front and equal amounts for the back. We're going to be creating the front and the back all in one step with this quilt, which is pretty handy because then you won't need to go back and quilt. We're doing a quilt as you go. So what I have here are all my creams and grays, and you're going to use seven of those. Once you get the pattern, you'll see the breakdown. You're going to need seven neutrals and then you're also going to need seven pinks or whatever your colorway of choice is. You're going to need seven of those fabrics as well. We used five greens in this quilt and I have those here, my five greens, and it shows you there how much you need of each one. One, two, three, we need 0.4 of a meter. Um, so keep in mind, everybody, a meter is 39 inches, a yard is 36 inches. So if you were to buy yourself half a yard, you would probably be fine. But you can also do that quick little conversion there. Just shows you fabrics one, two, and three, we need 0.4 of a meter. Fabrics four and five, 0.3 of a meter. And fabrics six and seven, 0.15 of a meter. That's not a lot at all. When we're getting into the fives, so these we're going to label one through seven and I've just taken a little bit of painter's tape and a marker and I wrote one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I put those on each of my fabrics because I've told you guys before, I need things clearly labeled, I need it directly said, I need you to be straight and to the point with me because this brain of mine, she don't get it unless you are straight and to the point. So if we clearly label everything, much easier for this old brain of mine. My greens, I have now labeled A through E so that we don't mix up. So we know our sevens are one through seven, our fives are gonna be A through E. And your corresponding colors on the back are also gonna be one through seven and A through E. And what's really nice, Sheila has provided us with this layout diagram. I suspect her husband, Ron, may have had something to do with that or even her daughter, Jordan. So Ron, Jordan, thanks for all you do as well. Um, and so they've provided this little layout here uh, that shows you how we are going to create that look within the quilt. Are we getting any questions or anything there yet, Al? No, lots have made? Nice. Yeah. A meter is 39 inches and a yard is 36 inches. So they're really, really very close. Um, I tend to use the terms interchangeably. They aren't necessarily, but um, if you were to buy 0.4 of a yard, you might not have quite enough. So if you're in yards, go up just a little bit or else do that conversion between 36 to 39 uh, yards to, to meters. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how you would do that. 
So let's say here, let's just do a quick tutorial on this, okay? 0.4 of a meter. Digging out the calculator. So I know a meter is 39 inches. So I've put 39 into my calculator and now I'm going to go times 0.4. And that tells me 0.4 of a meter is actually 15.6 inches. Let's round that up for safety to 16 inches. So 16 inches, almost half of a yard, right? So I would just kind of round those numbers up. If you want to do the conversion to get the exact amount of inches, then that's how you would do it. Start with your 39 inches, which represents a meter, and then you're going to go 0 0.3 of 39 inches. 39 times 0.3. So 0 0.3 is actually 11.7 inches, so get 12. And so that's how you can do your conversion back and forth there, okay? I know um, it's confusing going back and forth between meters and yards, but they're so close that we should be okay. And that's why I wanted to just tell you how I figure it out. When I am looking at your American patterns and everything's in yards and my brain is like, what? I need meters. So it goes both ways for all of us, right? We all have to do a little bit of conversion. Ooh, sweatshirts, Marianne. That's a good idea. That'd be a good way to make a memory quilt for someone. That would be really cozy. That's awesome. You could also use regular cottons. You don't necessarily have to use flannel. Flannel just really, really rags and really gives us that um, extra fluffy intersection or edge. If you were to use regular cottons, you would get kind of a chenille look. So the pile that you're creating here would be a little bit uh, less. It wouldn't be as big and um, not quite as fluffy but you would still get that rag type of look. You could just use regular cottons if that was your preference. It's your quilt, do what you want, right? Okay, so I am going to start today by cutting out my top fabrics. I'm going to put aside my backing fabrics for today and we're just gonna start cutting out our rectangles that we need for the top. Now what you're going to notice is that the instructions tell you to cut out bricks that are five inches by nine inches. And when you look at the edges of the quilt, you're gonna notice that these are not five by nine. So what's gonna happen as we're assembling this entire quilt is that you're gonna have a little chunk that hangs off every other row. And when we have the entire thing assembled, we're just gonna trim that to make it so that those blocks become a little bit smaller. And then that way we don't have to keep track of so much. We're already keeping track of where the fabric is placed and you will find that you actually need to lay out both sides to ensure that you get this neat design. Unless of course you just don't care and you want um, your fabrics wherever, that's fine too, that's your choice. But if you want it to be like this, you're gonna have to lay out both sides of the quilt so that you can match up your front and back because we're gonna actually take a front, a back, put batting in the middle, and we're gonna quilt an X through that brick. And we're gonna quilt all those bricks and then we'll join them all together in rows. And that's why we have no rag on the back and all the rag is on the front. We keep all our seams on the front side of the quilt and they're exposed, but it's all quilted as you go and then it's finished when it's finished. Yeah, you probably could. This quilt would be perfect for flannel. Absolutely. Flannel is what I'm using today. Um, the flannels that I have are almost wool-like. They are so woven. Woven is the exact word for it. And they're just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But you could use whatever flannels you want. And like I mentioned earlier, you could also use cottons if you have a lot of them. Use them up. Go for it. So what we're going to do, first you're going to label your fabric. So, you know, your first seven are going to be one through seven and the second set are going to be A through E. And just do that to keep yourself straight and it will make the job easier when you have to go put everything together later. So the next section, the number of rectangles that you need to cut from the fabrics will be the same for front and back. So your one on top and your one on the back, you're gonna cut the same amount of rectangles. So if 
Fabric number one needs 11 rectangles and each rectangle is going to measure five by nine. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I'm glad you like it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Sheila comes up with so many great ideas. We're, we're really fortunate. So we didn't worry too much about a close-up view today, guys, just because cutting five by nine inch squares isn't terribly difficult. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to leave them here in the comments. I'd be happy to help. Today I'm using my six by 12 Omni Grip ruler and I've added my um, guidelines for quilting upgrade. It's a slider and it's just gonna make sure that I stay good and accurate while I'm cutting. I'm going to first square up this beginning edge because there's nothing more disappointing than um, making that first cut and realizing that the first edge was not straight or square. Get that out of there. Now out of a 40-ish inch strip, I'm gonna get five nine inch bricks. Or I could cut my fabric nine inches wide and get eight five inch bricks. I need 11. I do five, it's 13. I'm just going to start by cutting three strips of five. That's going to be my best bet, I think. Hi, Olive. That's a great question. We could do a kit up for you. Absolutely. I do have all these fat quarters on the website. But fat quarter wouldn't quite be enough of some of those fabrics. So we'll see what we can have organized for next week. Okay, Olive? We'll get our little butts in gear and try and get that on the website. Okay. So I th I'm cutting five inch strips and then I'm going to get hopefully five bricks across the length of that. We'll see in just a minute here. The rotary cutter I'm using is called an ergonomic rotary cutter, so you can see that it is uh, positioned a little bit differently than your regular rotary cutter. It's supposed to put less strain onto your hand, and when I say supposed to, it, it, it truly does. I used to get a lot of pain in my hands when I was cutting, and now because of the way you push through the palm, instead of pushing down like this, um, my hands are much happier now with this rotary cutter and you can find those on the website they do come in right or left-handed and they do come in three different sizes so make sure that you are selecting the appropriate one that you're after if you go looking for them all right so this I'm gonna keep in this little scrappy do set aside for now now, because I like to try and do a lot at once, I'm gonna stack these on top of each other. And we're gonna cut nine inch bricks out of this. The first thing we need to do is get rid of our salvages down here. So let's turn this around. Connie says hi. Hi, Connie. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to trim off my salvages. And if you're wanting to cut through lots of layers of flannel, it's nice to have a 60 millimeter uh, cutter because it's extra big and it can go through lots of layers at once. So I've got six layers here. And I am going to start at one so I don't throw myself off. I cut at the nine and the 18. 
That'll be six and six. That'll give me 12 and I need 11. So I'm gonna be a little bit ahead of myself here. Oh, I'm glad that you like it, Pamela. I love mine. Love, love, love. And it really cuts through lots of layers, like just slick as anything. Somebody commented on one of the Facebook posts and said it's like a hot knife through butter. And it, I thought that was a really good description. All right, so I'm getting myself a good little pile of scraps here. Maybe we'll do an additional giveaway of all those later. So I've kept my number one piece of painter's tape that was on my yardage. And I am going to put that on this little pile of five by nine inch squares. So I don't have any questions later. I know exactly what I'm at, where I'm at. So if you've just joined us, welcome. My name is Brady. Uh, this is our Stash Busters series. Today we are working on a quilt called Stronghold and it is the rag quilt that you see on display behind me. And it also, the pattern comes with a couple of um, instructions to make some pillows to match your rag quilt because you're gonna have a little bit of fabric left over. If you're interested in that pattern, it's a free pattern while we're creating these videos and you can get it at sparrowquiltco.com. You're just gonna enter your email address will reply with an email that has the pattern attached. All your yardage requirements are in there and uh, we are just starting with the cutting out today. We like to do a giveaway during these videos. So my giveaway today is going to be a pair of rag snips and these are gonna make your life so much easier when you get to the point of putting, getting this all raggy. What we have to do is snip, snip, snip into that seam allowance and then we put it through the wash and it gets all soft and fuzzy but it's a lot of work it's a lot of work to do that step so that's why i am rewarding you for being our uh, valued viewer with a nice pair of rag snips i would get the left-handed one yeah, get the left-handed one. I'm sorry, what was the name? Cheryl. Cheryl, yeah. I would definitely go left with that one, Cheryl. Because you wouldn't be able to use the right-handed one safely, in my opinion. But the, uh, the left-handed one is completely reversed so that you would be able to, your handle would be on this side. So you could safely use that. Hi, Barbara from Oregon. Welcome to the show. So again, I am going to square up my first edge. That keeps me accurate. And we are going to cut five inch strips. Fabric number two, I need 12 five by nine rectangles. So again, I'm going to cut three strips that are five inches wide. Is it? Uh, yeah, you guys have a lot of forest fires down there by Penticton Hayes at Osoyoos and Kelowna. It's hard to keep up with it. They move and change so fast. But we are, you know, 12 hours away from that area and we, our sky is thick with the smoke, but uh, there's lots of forest fires in radium as well from what I hear. So I suspect that's really what's coming our way, but our sun looks pink. It, everything is just a haze here. I can't imagine actually being right there. I know. I feel for the folks that are right there because we even have like a, an air health warning because the smoke is so thick in our area and it's so hot here right now. Um, it's supposed to be 36 degrees today or something like that. This heat and this smoke is so bad for those with health concerns. I really, oh, I just wish everybody was able to stay inside with air conditioning at this time. What thread do I use when I am sewing my quilts together? So I love Aurafil thread. Um, it is a cotton and it is a 50, uh, I use the 50 weight, sorry, I shouldn't misrepresent it. Uh, Aurafil is available in all kinds of weights, colors, types, plies. And what I use is a 50 weight <clears throat> cotton. Um, 
sometime I will do a little demo for you guys. But 50 weight is a very nice thin thread and it takes up very little space in your seam allowance. So that's why it's my preference when I am piecing quilts. For this particular type of project, it wouldn't, it doesn't matter how much room it takes up in your seam allowance because we're not doing a traditional type of piecing. But um, that is my preference. It's a really thin cotton piecing thread. And I just love Aurifil. It's really, really good quality. All right, strip number two. So there are forest fires west of us. I'm not sure which direction. I think I just pointed south, actually. <laughs> forest fires um, pretty much consuming large portions of the province that's next to us. And the air just makes its way towards us. And yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a mountain range right there as well. So the air just, you know, it comes up over the mountains and it just comes right towards us. So, um, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Lang's just reminding me that we're in a valley, like we're on a river. So everything just kind of settles into the, uh, lowest spot. So that's why we really get it kind of. There's fires on the island too. So I remember last summer we were out on the island and there was a man smoking a cigarette at one of the provincial parks and this other lady chased that man through this park. Excuse me, sir, we don't want our island on fire. And I thought, my goodness, it's real. <laughs> I always admire when people are willing to stand up for what they believe in. But she was just this little tiny gal and she's chasing this big man and just telling him off. She was... My flannel is folded in half currently, yes. I have cut these strips right off my yardage, piled them up, and so now I've got six layers here. Hi, Jamie from Wyoming. Ooh. Hi, and Tabor. That's where Matt's from. My husband, the man quilter. Oh, I bet. Yes, I've seen lots about those fires too, Cindy. It's terrible, my goodness. I guess what we have to remind ourselves is that forest fires are actually a natural phenomenon, and it's actually necessary for fires to forests to burn themselves down every once in a while but but we're in the way and when cigarettes get tossed out of a car or something silly like that you know that's undesirable walla walla <laughs> we're having fun saying walla walla <laughs> hello and welcome <laughs> all right so again i'm cutting these five inch strips into nine inch bricks. I'm going to get two cuts out of this um, strip set and then I will move on to my next fabric. And I'm getting six layers done in one shot. So that's kind of nice because I feel like already, I feel like I'm breezing through this. I'm already on fabric number two. So cut at the nine and cut at the 18. And I kept my little strip of tape that says this is fabric two. And we're just gonna keep a nice little pile here and put those in the scrap bundle. Maybe I'll do another little giveaway. Let's see. Yes, yeah, three bricks that are five by seven out of each fabric. I've still got a whole nother strip over there that I could use for my pillow. And I just, scraps drive me crazy. I need to get them out of my life. So I'm going to give them away later, whether I'm allowed or not. Okay, so let's get a pen so I can check off where I'm at. We've done one and we've done two. Fabric number three, we're going to need nine bricks. We are getting... Twelve out of three. So it's four per... Still gonna need to cut. If I cut it nine wide, I'd only get 
eat. Mm -hmm. Just trying to figure out the best way to do this cutting. Even the fold is not going to be quite enough. So we're just going to have extra of that one. All right, fabric number three. I still need to cut three strips. Sorry for all that babble. Sometimes I just have to work through the math while talking aloud and it makes me look a little bit crazy. <laughs> Matt always worries when I stare off into space and start blurting random numbers, but I usually come back with some sort of uh, equation that I've solved at least. Lucky I can do that in my head. Anyways, all right, enough sharing my craziness with you. Let's go ahead and trim up this first edge so that it is nice and square before we begin cutting our strips. Now, Landon usually asks me for a tip of the day, and when she comes back, I'll tell her as well. This fabric uh, just reminded me what I was planning to use as my tip of the day. My tip of the day is to let it go. What you are going to find is when you're working with um, plaids or stuff with stripes, or when there's lines going in different directions, you're gonna look at the fabric and it's not gonna be square. And I was looking at this one as I was cutting it this morning and I thought, I wonder if I could just kind of like tug the grain and try and straighten it out. And I took a small piece and I actually started distorting the weave of the fabric, which I don't want to do. I don't wanna compromise the quality of my fabric just so that my lines are straight. So that's my suggestion to you today is to let it go. It's okay if your lines are not perfectly straight and square. It's not the end of the world. If you are submitting a quilt to the Houston Quilt Festival, then yes, I cannot stress more clearly to you that your lines must be straight and square. But if you are making a little quilt to throw on your couch to keep you warm on a cool evening, then it's not the end of the world if your lines are not straight and square. So. I learned very early on, even from my very precise quilt shop owner who taught me to quilt, you know, I struggled and struggled with a panel one time and I brought it in the next day and she's like, oh, they're never square, don't worry about it. Well, this is coming from the precise, most precise quilter I had ever met up to that point. So that's my advice to you. Let it go. Don't worry so much if everything is not perfectly straight on the fabric. Sometimes it never will be. It won't matter how much you fiddle with it. You can actually destroy that fabric trying to get it square. So if your lines are a little bit crooked, just count it as a bit of humility. This is a really simple quilt. Yes, a beginner could make this quilt. Absolutely. Oh, it kind of does, the wall behind the quilt. <laughs> So I was just preaching at everybody, Landon, that my tip of the day is to just let it go. <laughs> like say, if your print isn't perfectly square on here, I can't get this square. That's really hard. Yeah, exactly. It's rarely printed square. This is actually woven, but it wouldn't be easy to get it square. You'd have to buy so much extra yardage to try and get it that way. That's okay, Jamie. I understand. Flannel is thick, flannel is shifty, and it can be difficult to work with. All of that said, if you are quilting on your domestic machine, that in itself is also a challenge. It's not easy, even on a baby quilt, not in my opinion anyways. Um, as a beginner, I'm just going to suggest be patient with yourself. Stick with it. Keep trying. It's going to get easier. Um, Simple patterns are always highly recommended for beginner quilters. Straight lines are um, a nice solution, maybe an inch apart or so. I know they don't feel terribly exciting or creative, but at least it gets the job done, right? And gets you a usable quilt. But I understand your pain. There's a reason I own a long arm quilting studio. 
All right, so I have cut three strips that are five inches wide. I've stacked them all on top of each other. I've got six layers of fabric here. I'm gonna trim off my salvages and then I'm gonna cut nine inch bricks again. I used to keep all those salvages. I don't know what I thought I was gonna do with them all. I do have a friend, though, who makes them into fabulous items. Um, but, that, you know, if you cut the salvage off, like, your yardage before you cut it into strips, it's a lot more usable. You can make some pretty cool projects out of salvage. Hi, Debbie Webster. <laughs> All right, there's a 9, and here's an 18. We do. Yep, we're going to put batting in between the layers of flannel. I got a scruffy piece of batting here somewhere. Um, scraps, this is where you're going to use up all your scrap batting. You're, yep, it doesn't matter. Well, you need it to at least be the size of these blocks, five by nine. You could even make it a little bit smaller if you wanted. Um, and you just place it in between and we stitch our X and that's what gives us the thickness. Um, but oh, you can use up all kinds of scrap batting in this particular project. So all those pieces that have been messing up your closet, it's time to dig them out. Dig them out, we're gonna use them in this quilt. So there is fabric number three, let's check it off the list. I'm trying to remember to do my intro every once in a while, so if you're just joining us, welcome, my name is Brady, this is our Stash Buster series, and we're working on the Stronghold quilt, which is the red quilt you can see on display behind me. If you'd like the free pattern, please visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. You're going to enter your name and email address and we will reply with the pattern attached to an email. Thread quilts, you are always going to find more. There will always be more fluff <laughs> that you can find on that quilt to pick away. Um, so this quilt is double-sided. We've got neutrals and greens on this side. On the back side, we've got pretty pinks and some aqua tealies, a little bit of coral. Um, and we are making ours out of flannel. You could also make it out of cotton if you really, really wanted. It would be a slightly more lightweight quilt. Your rag portion of it wouldn't be as thick, but cotton will also do that rag type look. But when we do it with cotton, we call it chenilling. So you know, that will also work. If you've got some beautiful fabrics that you want to make in this style, go for it. It's your quilt. Do what you want. Oh, so thank you for bringing that up, Carol. To enter for the giveaway, we're going to give away a pair of rag snips at the end of the show. You're just going to share this video. Underneath the video, you'll see the option to like, comment, and share. Go ahead and share it, and uh, that will enter you into the prize giveaway. It is probably at least an inch because the cell, the fabric is always folded in half, but one side is always just a little bit less than the other side. And so I end up losing more than I want, but I would say it's probably a good inch. Let's see. Yeah. See with this one, that's probably only half, but the other side was an inch because it's not folded uh, exactly in half. So half inch off one side and an inch off the other side would be my estimate. And it is really important to remove the salvage because it just does not behave like the rest of the fabric. So you want it out of there. It looks velvety, doesn't it? No, it's flannel too. The border is not velvet. It is also flannel. It's just another one of the fabrics that's in the quilt. But this flannel is especially plush and uh, beautiful. All right, so just trying to line this up so I can square that first edge. And this is fabric number four, so we are gonna cut seven this time. Seven bricks is all I need, and I'm getting four per strip. I only need two strips this time. We're now into our lower numbers of required yardage. 
you could use cotton and flannel together if you wanted. You would feel difference in the thickness. You know, if you had cotton here and flannel here, your flannel would just feel thicker. But like, I don't see any reason why you couldn't. We're gonna be using a big fat seam allowance, probably half an inch at least. Ooh, cotton, that would be fabulous. That's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Or cotton on the top and flannel on the back. Like, it'd be nice and cozy. I think you could. Um, I'm not one to tell you you cannot. Because I don't like it when people tell me I cannot. <laughs> she says she loves the pattern and Charlene loves the pattern and would. Okay, so the if you want to download the free pattern, you're going to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com or just click the link above this video and then you'll enter your email and we'll email you the pattern. And then you can participate too. And don't feel you need to follow my colorways or Sheila's colorways. I would love to see what you create with your own colorways. If you just go pure scrappy, I want to see that too. Share pictures. <laughs> Ooh. Don't. Don't wash. Um, you really will get more of this raggy effect if you don't pre-wash. It's all going to shrink together, hopefully at about the same rate, you know, all flannels. Cottons don't shrink quite as much as flannel, so that is one consideration if you're going to mix with that. Lennon saying it would make it nice and puffy if one shrunk just a little bit more than the other. I think it will be fine. Like, I never pre-wash anything. And I know a lot of people frown upon that. But I've really, honestly, never had any bad effects because of it. And I've made a lot of quilts, so. And I've washed every single one of them. No, maybe not every single one. I shouldn't tell lies. I've never washed the bar jello. Okay. I don't see why not. You wouldn't be able to quilt it as you go. You would have to create a front and a back and your back would have to be slightly bigger so you could quilt it. It wouldn't it be as easy to line things up exactly like, you know, this little square is exactly matched with this little square on the back. You might not have that level of precise lining up if you did not do the rag quilt method, but I don't see why you couldn't. The finish size of the quilt, that's an excellent question. That's not there today. That's unusual. We'll grab a measuring tape. Let's have a look. It is 51, about 51 by 60. So that's actually a nice, did you say crib size? Yeah. Slightly bigger than crib size, but that I, I like to make a big baby quilt because those little honeys grow so fast. So it's kind of nice to make a quilt that they kind of have to grow into instead of one that they're going to be out of within the year. You're welcome, Carol. Thanks for watching. Oh, that would probably be easier for a wee one. So, Carol, yes, sir, made a turtle so turtle Sorry, Donna, Donna. turtle shaped rag quilt. Yes. That's a neat idea. And use flannel in the middle layer instead of more batting, which would probably make it easier for a wee one to drag that around. This flannel would be slightly lighter weight than the batting would be. All right, well, thanks for being patient while I folded up my tape measure. Now I can put it back where it belongs. All right. So this time I only need, oh dear, seven. 
seven squares. So let's stack these up. And trim away our salvage. And again, my lines on here are not straight, but I refuse to stress about it because I know it's still gonna look beautiful in the quilt. It's not going to affect the structural integrity of the quilt. It's just that when we look at it, we want it to be straight. So it's usually just a personal preference rather than an actual necessity. Nine. Hi, Melissa from Tennessee. Welcome. Ooh, Lorraine, I'll bet it's hot where you are in Hawaii. So Charlene, you can click the link above this video or you can visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. You're just gonna put your email address into the little form there and you'll receive an email with the pattern attached. Ah, but the, the link is there, good, okay. All right, so we are on fabric five of seven and fabric number five, we need five squares, so that means two strips. We're getting a little lower each time. These fabrics were, are they Marcus? Primo plaids is what they were called and they are just beautiful. They're really thick. But I want to trim off this first edge because it is far from straight and we always want a straight edge to begin. Now I hope you heard earlier, if not, um, please share this video. We'll be giving away a set of rag quilting snips. Now these have a spring loaded little mechanism in them. So when I am snip, 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 snipping all of these seams that I'm gonna create, that spring helps my hand uh, get the job done. So those are really a great tool to have when you are making rag quilts. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is to share this video. So please go ahead and do that. Yeah. Deborah, you said? Deborah, this is about ergonomic rotary cutter. It is, um, you can see it's arranged a little bit differently than our typical rotary cutter. So um, when we're using our regular rotary cutter, I find it gets really hard on the first knuckle of my cutting hand. And so when I use this one, I'm not putting any unnecessary pressure on my hand. I'm able to push forward rather than pushing down. And it just saves on my hand and my elbow. And um, it's just a really great cutter. I can use it sitting down too, which I really like. I don't do that often, but it's a nice option to have. So those are available on the website. Make sure that you check for right versus left hand. And um, there's also 28, 45 and 60 mil size available. So there's a few options there. Just make sure you're getting the one that you actually want. This is true from those snippers, I think, but she said snippers. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna give them a close up. Awesome, good idea. So there Landon's giving you a little bit closer view of the fabrics I'm using today, the Primo plaids. And those are all on the website too in uh, fat quarter bundles. We're gonna see what we can come up with for kits. I got quite a bit of yardage left still yet, although they've been really popular. And I've gotta say, yeah, they might've been uh, 15 yard bolts. They're so beautiful. I tell you, anything that's got a houndstooth in it, I'm like, yep, sign me up. And of course, there is houndstooth in there, as you can probably see. So the cutting for this is so, so simple. And it is, you probably could easily get it done in an afternoon. If you're gonna bomb ahead and get started on the actual sewing or piecing, um, what you're gonna find is that you're gonna be doing the quilting first 
little bit reverse from what we normally do. So I'm thinking after I do this cut, maybe I'll just show you quickly how we put that little quilt sandwich together and um, just give you some advice for that in a moment. I'll get through this first so I'm not too distracted. There's a nine. There's an 18. All right, I'm getting a pretty good pile of little scraps here. Put my five back on. Let me find my little scruffy batting. There she is. All right, so like I was mentioning earlier, you're going to be able to use up all kinds of batting scraps for this project. Any of those weird shapes like this one is 22 inches wide. And it was like 96 or 120 <laughs> in length. Well, what are you going to use that for? A rag quilt. It's exactly what you're going to use it for. So let's see, what does Sheila suggest? see it in there so we're just gonna cut a five inch strip of batting in this one it's coming out um, I think it's preference or just what the pattern advises you to do yeah it gives more to the rag look for sure So let's cut this five inches wide and then I'll trim it down into nine inch bricks. We don't need a lot. I'm going to stuff this out of the way because it's ugly. Sorry, batting. Different size options. Hmm? There's only just the one in this pattern. Just the one size in this pattern. You could, you know, if we just doubled it and just make it bigger. You could make it gigantic by quadrupling it. It just takes some figuring, you know, to make it a bit bigger. So there I've got two little batting rectangles. So let's take two of our fabrics just for fun. And it's hard, from what I can see, to tell what's right or wrong side with flannels. It's um, not going to be the end of the world if one side is the wrong side out. What I'm finding with these flannels is one side feels a little bit softer and the other side feels a little bit more grainy. Like I can actually feel the threads in the fabric just a little bit more. So I'm using the soft side as the side to be out. Okay, so I have got this piece with the right side facing down and I'm going to place this little batting rectangle over top of it. And now this one, I'm putting right side up. So I have pretty much created a tiny quilt sandwich here, just like I would make my regular quilts. So your backing fabric, right side down, batting, and then your quilt top, right side up. Now I do suggest if you can figure out what's the right and wrong side of your batting, that's a good idea. Um, with the batting we use here, it's Hobbs 8020. The top has kind of a dimpled appearance. The back has kind of a lumpy or um, bumpy appearance. If you're uncertain, you can take a pin and poke through. You'll get a little bit of resistance on, wrong, on one side. That's the wrong side. Put it down. Um, if all else fails, just use it. It won't matter. It'll be fine. But... Um, I always teach people about the right and wrong side when I'm teaching long arming, so may as well mention it here. Do your best to have it right side up 
and the right side being up towards your top fabric. Uh, I'm using Hobbs 8020. The pillow pattern comes with the quilt pattern. You're going to have a little bit of leftovers from what we're making here, so that's what you can make the pillows out of. And um, they're really cute because they're double sided too, so your quilt's double sided, your pillows are double sided. You could actually get a whole new look in a room if you just flip things around. Sorry? Oh, okay. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Brady, and this is our Stash Busters series. We're working today on the Stronghold quilt. It's a red quilt pattern. You can see it on display behind me. The pattern actually comes with a couple of pillow instructions to make a couple of pillows as well. And the quilt is double-sided, as are the pillows. So you can arrange it uh, so that you've actually got two totally different looks in the same room just by flipping things around. In order to get the pattern, you're going to click the link above this video or visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. You're just going to put your email address into the little field there and we'll send you an email with the pattern attached. You'll also find um, a Stash Busters section on our website where we've done previous patterns and tutorials and all of this will live in that same spot uh, in the future as well as on our YouTube channel. So if you aren't able to get to this today or start right away, don't worry. These tutorials will still exist. Just get your pattern now while it's free. Once we wrap up the series, the pattern is no longer free. So that's my advice is get it now while you can. All right, so back to this tiny little quilt sandwich that I have been um, demonstrating. Just as an example, I've taken two squares and I've sandwiched some batting in between them and now we're going to have to quilt this. So what you could do is lay out your ruler from corner to corner and just do a quick marking line and you're going to mark an X from corner to corner both directions. And Sheila did that on hers. She did all the um, quilting before we assemble the quilt. I highly suggest using a walking foot on your machine while you're doing this job. Anything that can help you move that thickness through the machine is a good thing. And I would also um, just be patient. Just be patient and take your time. It's going to take quite a bit of stitching to do that X on every single uh, set of rectangles. And then we're going to assemble it in rows. Today I'm just doing the cutting out, but some of you like to work ahead, so I thought I would just do this quick little portion on how to actually quilt those little sandwiches together. So if you've got any questions, please leave them there in the comments and Landon will read them to me. I'm going to keep on cutting. I'm going to move on now to fabric number six. But I'll keep my little quilt sandwich there in case anybody's got a question, okay? Now this one feels completely different than all the other fabrics. It's completely coarse feeling. It doesn't have a side that feels kind of soft or brushed. I don't know why. It almost reminds me more of a dishcloth than um, a soft quilting fabric. Doesn't that sound appealing? <laughs> Just the one. <laughs> she she didn't, didn't believe me. <laughs> I know, these ones feel like they were brushed or like softened up, but this one just doesn't have that coziness. So when you're rubbing your cheek on that little corner, that's why. You're like, oh, that one scratched me. All right, so we're just squaring up this first edge to make sure that I have a nice straight line to begin with. Another fabric option. We thought about it. I don't really have anything too exciting at the moment. You guys have seen it all already. But we'll do something soon. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll do some sort of um, maybe fat quarter clear out or something. What went wrong there? It was not a straight line. That edge is not square. We're going to try this one more time. 
I did not line up to the same line, so I... <laughs> cut on a slight little angle there. All right, there we go. Now we're actually square. So I'm cutting five inch strips at the moment. What's really great about this quilt is everything is cut the exact same size. You just need to keep track of what your fabrics are. I've labeled all my fabrics one through seven and A through E, and then you'll do the same thing with the fabrics that are on the back. When you label your back fabrics, I would put B1, B2, so that you know B stands for back, and that will help you keep everything straight. My colors are also very vastly different on the front and back, so that helps me quite a bit too. No mixing that up, really. Okay, so fabric six, I need three. Oh, I only need one strip this time. As my numbers go up, I'm cutting less and less. We're getting pretty close to the end of the show today, guys. So this is probably your last chance to share the video to qualify to win. We're, our prize today is a set of rag snips that will make your job easier once you have this whole big quilt put together. And I'll be announcing that winner at the end of the show here. It sounds like Bob's sewing up there. Yeah. All right, so you will find as you're cutting this quilt out, you're gonna have a little bit of extras. Just keep them, put them aside. That's how you're going to make your pillows, which are gonna match your quilt. Sheila was really smart with that. She made it a zippered enclosure, so when the kids spill their juice on your pillow, you can whip that uh, off and toss it in the washing machine. At least that's what I have to do at my house. My kids don't drink juice. And they don't do it on the couch if they want their lives to carry on. But they still spill stuff, so kids are kids. All right, so this is my last fabric of my neutrals. This is fabric number seven. I need a square, uno. So let's get that cut out. Was there any questions on the quilt sandwich at all, Elle, or was it pretty straightforward? Okay, good. Oh, you could. I don't know if you'll be happy about it, but if you were going to use Minky, I would... It won't play like one. It's a polyester. Yeah. You could, but it wouldn't be fun. And I don't know, the thing with flannel is that when you cut it... Not flannel, the thing with Minky. So Minky has like a, a base and then all the fur is like woven into the base. And when you trim it, sometimes you, you trim the fur and then you get these little bits of Minky everywhere, like literally everywhere. It might drive you nuts. It might honestly make you nuts because this would constantly be shedding like even more than this flannel does. Do a little tiny one. Do like four squares just for fun and see how it behaves. Yeah, I would not commit to an entire quilt and minky until I did a little sample piece first. The sewing with minky is challenging. You could serge it, but then you wouldn't get that raggy look. One piece at a time, right? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> this is the kind of thing you can kind of walk away from and come back later and just be able to pick right back up where you left off. All right, so this last fabric, I only need a single five by nine 
frick out of it. So give me just a moment and I will have that part all done to done. Get rid of you. Bring this down to zero. Chop it at the nine. All right. This is extra. This is seven. There we go. All right, I've got all my neutrals cut out. And we still got 15 minutes left. So now I'm going to move on to my greens. And I am going to start cutting those out as well. This is the green that's in the border and it's just so plush. It really, really looks to me like a wool suit almost. It's a beautiful line of fabrics. I hope you've been watching all along. If not, um, you can get this free pattern that we're working on today. It's called Stronghold and it's on the website at sparrowquiltco.com. You can also follow the link uh, directly above this video. You're going to put in your email address and you can get this pattern for free. You get it now before the video series wraps up because after that it is for sale, not for free. It's always good to get it while it's free. At least I think so. So I only need one strip of this. We only use two blocks of fabric A. And I'm keeping my painter's tape on my cut bricks so I can be clear about what's what before I proceed to the next step. You are going to need a fairly uh, good sized space so that you can lay all this out. And I do recommend laying out the front and the back because they're going to match each other. So once you have that all figured out, you can create all your little quilt sandwiches. And stitch them all together. So I thought I only needed two, so I will just cut those and set this aside. So these are those strips that I was telling you you're going to have left over that you can make into pillows later. So don't despair. You're not going to have a whole ton of extra fabric. You can make it into something else that matches your quilt. Fabric B, I need four squares. So one strip will do it. Oh, I like this one a lot. Is it Minky, Polly? Minky is Polly, yes. Yeah, just a few Minky blocks would probably be uh, manageable. But a whole quilt in Minky, I think, would be a challenge. But if you like a challenge, then go for it. I don't have the patience. I rip out all my hair, I'm sure of it. So don't forget, guys, my tip of the day was let it go. When you were working with plaids, Sometimes all those straight lines don't look very straight. It is not going to affect the structural integrity of your quilt if your lines do not look straight on the quilt. It's more a personal preference. It's more pleasing to the eye when things are straight. But if they're not, it's not the end of the world. You're still going to have a beautifully handmade item that you created with love. So don't be hard on yourself. The fabrics themselves are rarely square. So... Don't take it personally. I'm going to have a lot of this left over. It just might have to come home with me. Or I might have to do a little bit of a giveaway at the end of this quilt. I was going to give away all those scraps today, but I'm not finished cutting, so we may as well get to the end first and then give it away. Fabric B, four squares, I forgot to. Forgot to check off my A fabric. All right, do as I say, not as I do. Don't cut towards yourself, kids. 
All right, so now I'm cutting at the nine and at the 18. Okay, let's get our B sticker on there. Aren't those looking nice? I just love laying out all my cut pieces and admiring them. <laughs> do you do that too? I like take pictures and pose them and make them all pretty. It's like I need to document all the hard work I did. Fabric C, we need six strips. So I'm gonna cut two five inch strips of this guy. But first I better square it up. I love the color in this. Boy, this is pretty. All right, Miss Lynn is going to select a winner for us and we will give away a set of rag quilting snips to some lucky individual who will not have to manually cut it with scissors. I promise you will love me forever if I send you these. And you make a right quilt. The first time I did it, I was like, it'll be fine. I don't really need those. Oh my goodness. You need them. Otherwise, you may find that your quilt never gets finished. <laughs> All right. One strip and a second strip. <laughs> so we're kind of approaching the end of the show here, guys. We will be back again next Friday at 10.30 a.m. here live on the Facebook page. And don't worry if you can't join us right at that time. The show will be recorded there on the Facebook page and you will be able to come back and watch it later when it's convenient for you. Pardon? No problem. Yep, you got it. You got it. So yeah, we do this every Friday, the Stash Buster series we do on Fridays. We also do another show on Wednesdays. It's a um, mystery sampler quilt along, and um, that's a lot of fun too. So check that out on Wednesdays, and we always start at 10.30. It gives me a few minutes to get in the door and kind of get myself organized. Big guy's always watching. He doesn't miss too much. All right. This might be. These are not fat quarters. So the. Um, I just cut a half meter of every fabric I needed, and that is more than enough. The biggest piece of fabric you're going to need is a 0.4 and then whatever you put your two borders to be, each of those will be a meter. The yardage requirements are all there. Your largest size will be 0.4, so six fabrics at 0.4, eight fabrics at 0.4, and then the rest are 0.3s and 0.15s. Um, so fat quarters probably would not work for this pattern because there's a couple of them that you need more than that most of them actually we're going to try and do up some kits for this one for next friday okay figure out just how much fabric we've got there on the shelf and we'll have the kits ready and uh, we can share the link with you next week when we start again all right so right now i'm just working through my greens there's only five greens. I've already cut out the three. I've got two more to go. And fabric. Oh, that was fabric C. So this is fabric D. Oops. I'm getting too excited. D is eight. So this one, I need eight bricks. I'm going to cut two strips out of this one.
Now, hopefully you've already been to the website and put your email address in so that you can get the free pattern. If not, go ahead and do that now so that you have got it and you can start your cutting out. I'm hoping to get the rest of this cut out and then next week we'll just start quilting our little quilt sandwiches. But if you got cutting, you could easily get this quilt cut out in an afternoon uh, if you weren't so yappy like me and talking so, so much. It's one of my greatest skills is yapping. Did any of you get report cards when you were young? Brady is a social butterfly. which seems appropriate now because I always joke that I've got that fruit fly brain or hummingbird or butterfly would also be a, an appropriate term for that. What's really funny is this morning my brother came into work and he went from three different tasks in about 30 seconds and I thought, oh, you're so my brother. <laughs> Flitting around like a fruit fly. One step at a time, right? Okay, so those two strips will do it. Set this one aside. And I mentioned earlier that I was keeping all my little stickers and then putting them onto my actual blocks. That helps me stay organized. Once I've cut the fabric off the yardage, it doesn't matter if that's labeled anymore. So don't worry about keeping those labeled. Keep your actual bricks labeled so that you know what's what. That will also really help you when it's time to lay everything out as Sheila's diagram is also all labeled A through E and one through seven. So that's gonna help you a lot if you know uh, what your different fabrics are already identified as. I would be happy to go over the, the quilt sandwich again. No problem, let me cut these out and I will come back to that. Kathy Strawson. Oh, Kathy Cameron. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> there is just nothing wrong with being able to make friends. I guess there's just more appropriate times than others. whatever but does make me try to be a little bit more patient with my children when I read that in their report cards report cards are way different today though than uh, when I was a kid all right so let's go over our quilt sandwich again if you get your whole quilt cut out and you don't want to wait for next Friday that's fine I totally understand you are gonna cut out a whole bunch of scraps of batting, you're gonna cut them all five by nine. Same size as the bricks that you've already cut your fabric into. The fabric that's gonna be on the back side of the quilt, you're gonna lay it right side down, and then we're gonna put the batting on top of that. Try to put your batting right side up as well. If you don't know what side is right side up, it doesn't matter, it won't be the end of the world. But the top of batting usually has kind of a dimpled appearance, the back side has kind of a rough or bumpy appearance. If you're using like warm and natural, you'll find there's little brown flecks in it. That's the dirty side, it's not really dirty, it's just unbleached plant matter. That dirty side goes up towards the top of the quilt, okay? So we're gonna lay that out over the backing fabric. And you're gonna just make sure that the edges line up as nice as you possibly can. You are going to take the top fabric and you are going to lay it on top of that whole little quilt sandwich. So we are literally treating each little brick like its own quilt sandwich and then we'll assemble all those tiny quilt sandwiches into one great big quilt. You are quilting as you go. It's all gonna be quilted and when it's done, it's done. The last step will be to create all this rag in the intersections and that's why you really, 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 really want these rag snips. So I'll be giving away a set of those in a couple of minutes here. 
Uh, but they're just going to make your life a whole lot easier because they're spring loaded and you don't have to manually open and close the scissors with every single um, clip. If you would like, you can lay out, oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Sorry, everybody. You can lay out your ruler from corner to corner and just put a light, light marking along that, maybe with some uh, a blue clover marking pen or something that will come out, even one of those air erasable pens so that it will go away and just mark them as you go. If you mark them all ahead of time, the air erase marker will uh, dissipate before you get to it. So just quilt them or just mark them as you go. Put a line on the diagonal from corner to corner. Put another line on the diagonal from corner to corner and then you're just going to stitch an X through that block and then it will be done. Let's show a couple of them so we can talk about how you would put the entire thing. Thank you. <laughs> Sneezing all over the place. <laughs> Y'all are so nice. I don't want that stuff. So I'm just going to do up another little pretend sandwich here so we can put two side by side. So I was saying earlier that one side feels a little softer than the other and the other side feels a little more thready or grainy. So I'm putting the soft side out so that um, when I feel my quilt on either side, it's going to be the softer side. So this is right side down. Again, I'm going to put a piece of batting on top. And then I'm going to put another fabric right side up. So there I've got a second little quilt sandwich. <laughs> I wish I could just pinch the sides closed. That would make it much easier. <laughs> little raviolis. Aw. So when we piece these together, it's going to be different than what you normally do. When we piece normally, we're putting the right sides of our fabrics together and then we're opening them up and we're hiding the seam. This time we're going to put the back sides together and we're going to sew along a half inch seam, bigger than we're used to, bigger than the normal quarter inch seam. And then we're going to leave the seam on the outside. So these are both my top fabrics, we're going to call them. So I would line them up corner to corner and we're pretending that these are already quilted, pretending that I've already put my X's through these. So I would line up, actually we're going to put these together in rows. So along the short side, you're going to stitch a half inch seam. And I'm going to use pins just to make my job a little bit easier here for this little demo. We're just going to pretend that I've stitched this already. We're going to use our imaginations today. Because I threw my machine on the floor and I'm not picking it up at the moment. Mm -hmm. I've seen that too, where the batting is smaller. Um, and you can do that if you prefer. You could make your battings four by eight instead of the five by nine. So then when you piece them together, the back side is going to look like normal piecing, where you can see no seam. The other side is going to have this big seam sticking out. But this is going to be the part that we snip, snip, snip. And that's going to become the rag part of the quilt. We're going to sew this together in rows. And then we'll join our rows from top to bottom. Now, I'll admit this is not the best demonstration, but next week we'll actually do some of this real sewing. And then you'll get a real true idea of how it's going to look. I would not do any snipping, do not do any rag snipping until the end, okay? Don't do any trimming of anything until the end. We are going to save that so that everything goes together properly. 
And what you're going to find sometimes is that it just looks a bit sloppy. Maybe it doesn't look like things are lining up properly, but don't worry. Everything is going to be just fine. There's going to be a lot of thickness. So you need to just take your time with this project and really be patient and maybe use a slightly smaller stitch length. I'm usually about a 2.5 for this. I might go down to a two. While I'm doing my quilting though, I'm gonna go up to a four because I like a nice long stitch for my quilting. I don't want it to be a tiny, tiny little stitch. And you'll be able to use your feed dogs. Definitely use your walking foot and that's gonna help you quilt through the thickness here that you are gonna be working with. All right, if you've got any questions, if you feel like you're going to power ahead that much, go ahead and leave your questions. And otherwise, we will go over more of the sewing next Friday when we join again at 1030. Our Stash Busters is always at 1030 on Fridays. We also do our mystery sampler quilt along on Wednesdays at 1030. We're busy. We're busy. We're working on 800 things at once. But here's some incentive to tune in again next week. I will have all my little scraps. I'll have all my fabrics cut out and I'll have all these little scraps. And that's going to be one of my giveaways next week is all those leftovers. So we have 24 fabrics. We're going to have a nice five by seven inch brick of at least 24 fabrics. A Yes, you want to use a walking foot. No questions asked. You absolutely should use a walking foot. If you've not got one, do the best you can. Just be patient. Be patient. Because it does take a lot of work to get those thick quilt sandwiches through your machine. But be grateful that they're just little five by nine inch pieces that you're not quilting a big queen size quilt, right? So that's the nice thing about rag quilting is that we're quilting manageable chunks one by one. Lennon is choosing a winner for us. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my last green while I patiently wait. This one requires 10, ooh, that's a lot. So I'm getting four per, that means I need three five inch strips. I don't know why that edge is so straight. What kind of miracle is that? All right, I hope you all are going to make this quilt. If you are, I want you to send me some pictures. Send me your fabric choices <clears throat> and tell me what kind of fabric you're using. I know we talked a lot about using cotton versus flannel, even minky. Um, you could even just use a fleece. Fleece would work too. You could do it single-sided if you really wanted. Candy Frost. I hope you're still watching, Candy. Thank you for sharing the video. You are our winner today. Congratulations, Candy. You are the winner of our rag quilting snips. So, Candy, what I need from you, please, is send us a private message here on Facebook and include your phone number, include your email address and your mailing address. Don't leave it here on the video because then everybody will have your personal info. But if you could send that to us privately uh, through the inbox on the Facebook page, then we can get your prize out to you ASAP. Congratulations, Candy. There's one. Let's do one more. All right, everybody congratulate Candy because she has got a great tool now for finishing up her rag quilts. Hopefully she... You absolutely can use fleece. You could probably just do a single layer. You wouldn't need to uh, make all those little quilt sandwiches. You could just cut out the five by nine and then you could piece all your seams on the one side. And then... You wouldn't use batting. In fact, it would probably be really quick. You absolutely could use fleece. I'm certain of it. It would look awesome. And be so cuddly. That'd be a really plush, cuddly quilt. All right, I'm just gonna finish up cutting this last fabric and then we're gonna call it a day. 
thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you'll be back next Friday at 1030 when I'm going to start the actual stitching together of the little quilt sandwiches. I'm starting to get hungry all this talk about sandwiches, you guys. I got some homemade corn chowder in the fridge that's making me really, really hungry. All right, let's cut at the nine and again at the 18. You're so welcome, Jamie. I hope that helped. Yay. That's fantastic news. Okay, put my E back on. And there, I have all my fabrics for my top cut out entirely. That took me a little over 90 minutes, but I'm kind of a chatty one. So you could probably easily get this quilt cut out in a couple of hours and get your little self sewing in no time. You would have this rag quilt. You know, Sheila had hers done pretty quickly. I was surprised how fast she pounded through that. So, like I said, next Friday we'll be back at 10.30 a.m. We'll start stitching all these little quilt sandwiches together. Remember to use your walking foot and feel free to leave us a comment on the video if you have any questions about the process as you go. If you did not get your free pattern, click the link above this video. You're going to put in your email address on the website there and we will send you an email with the pattern attached. Thanks everybody for watching. Congratulations, Candy. Get us that information and we'll send these out to you ASAP. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Enjoy these last few days of summer are fleeting. They'll be gone before we know it. So get outside, enjoy some sunshine. Take care and bye for now.